Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the CUNYAC playoff semifinals between the B Bulldogs of Brooklyn College and your Baruch Bearcats here at the Arc Arena. It is the first semifinal between the one and the four seed. Alongside Jamal Chapman, I'm David Justin. Jamal, a great game between Brooklyn College and Baruch. They split during the regular season. Both games were close, including overtime at Brooklyn College and a three-point win here for the Bearcats. Yes, this is both. Both two teams that's coming in here to advance to the CUNYAC championship game. But this matchup is going to be a matchup of two teams, two solid teams. You see they play, both play neck and neck, pouring for both teams to come out and play good and strong. But the Bearcats would, could benefit from being at home as they went undefeated this season. It's Jade Spencer and Andre Harris on the tip, and Andre Harris wins it cleanly. It's going to be Jade Spencer, Jordan Wright, Anthony McLean, Michael Tessariero, and Noah Shy for the Bulldogs. For the Bearcats, it'll be their usual starting five. It'll be Jack Sixsmith, William Sixsmith, Bryler Page, Andre Harris, and George Smith Jr. And four seniors in the starting lineup for Jamal. Jamal. Last home game here at the Arc Arena for all four of them in the semifinals against Brooklyn College. Brooklyn College going right to left here in the early going, wearing their wine and or maroon jersey, gold letters. Baruch in their home whites, light blue trim as Jade Spencer into the paint, and he's quickly fouled. 
and will go to the line to shoot two. The foul there is going to be number 22, George Smith Jr., and already some action on both here ends here, Jamal, in the early going. Yeah, you see that straight out the gate. You know, Bala Page was going hard to the rim, and he was able to be aggressive, although it was a turnover, you know, a jump ball. On that last play, you see the Brook players end up on defense, you know, although they was able to get the foul. So we have the Brook, the Brooklyn College you have Spencer going to the line for two. But most importantly, you brought up that there's four seniors on in the starting lineup and out there on the court for the Bearcats, but a tough early foul, you know, for Andre Harris. George Smith Jr. on the first foul there for the Bearcats. So we have a stoppage of play here. And we're waiting to see what's going on. Don't forget, the CUNYAC finals are going to be this Friday. Actually, there's a problem with the floor here. We're going to wait to get that wiped off, make sure there's no uh, wet spots. But don't forget, the CUNYAC finals are going to be at Hunter College on Friday between the winner of this game, Baruch and Brooklyn, against the winner tomorrow night between at College of Staten Island between the number two Dolphins and the number three John Jay Bloodhounds. CUNYAC advises that tickets are free for the championship games on Friday, but all fans must register in advance. It is first come, first serve. And there's going to be separate tickets for the women's final and the men's final, so you'll need to get a different ticket for each game that you're going to. And we are back underway here. Spencer off on the first, and he'll go to the line for the second. And he's off on both. It'll be... Alan Villar, who just checked into the game for George Smith, and he'll get the rebound. And Coach Alisi quick to go to the bench there with Villar. Right, you know, you want to go ahead and get George, get Villar in there, especially if George Smith Jr. was able to get, got that first early foul. Cross-court pass there. Andre Harris, three off side rim, no good. Villar goes up for it, but it's going to be McLean who comes away with it, and he's quick to push. Now you see a different level of intensity right here from both teams right now. And a straightaway three there from Noah Shine. He gets us the scoring underway here as Brooklyn sets up in the full court trap. And it'll be sick, the Sixsmith brothers up top. Now Jack Sixsmith has it. Now with this type of gameplay right here, you know, this is one and done. So every possession is very important for both teams. Baruch trying to hold on to their undefeated streak here at the Arc Arena. And they're quickly moving the ball on the perimeter. Pick there from Harris at Sixsmith. Now Jack Sixsmith into the corner. Byler Page, open corner three. Around and out, no good. Rebounded underneath by Andre Harris. Shot blocked underneath by Spencer. It'll be Tessariero to push. Second team all Cuniac for Tessariero. Now it's right, uh, excuse me, right three. No good off right rim. Bounced long there to McLean who comes away with the rebound. And Coach John Baptiste of the Bulldogs wants to set up his offense. It'll be Tessariero on, on left wing. The group Bearcats definitely want, don't want to sleep on defense. They definitely want to bring the pressure to the Bulldogs. High floater there by McLean's no good. Spencer battling it out with Villar, and it's going to be Page who comes away with it. And Brooklyn quick to get back on defense. No time for them to set up in the press on that, on that one. It'll be Sixsmith on the right wing looking for options. Finds his brother Jack on the left wing. McLean all over him. Now it's Bryler Page. Bounce pass. Baseline jumper for Harris. He's able to rattle that one home, and Baruch get on the board. 2-15 gone here in the first. There you go. That's how you start right there. Just get the first bucket up, get back on defense. Bring the energy to the Bulldogs here. And let's see how the Bearcats feel in this defensive possession. Baruch having a little trouble in the first few minutes on the offensive end, but you got to like their ball movement, Jamal. Able to create a few open shots. Bryler Page on the corner three. Andre Harris as well on the three from the right corner. And then finally him on the ba Andre Harris on the baseline, able to knock that one down. You know, moving the ball around has been their recipe for success this, this season. As they move the ball around, they're able to find open shots and most of the time make them. Make them. It'll be William Sixsmith on the right wing. Quickly closing out on him is Shy and Jack Sixsmith will set it up. It'll be Andre Harris up top. Alan Villar looking for the entry pass, but instead it'll be off to Bryler Page on the left wing. Jack Sixsmith up top, and you can hear a noisy arc arena here for this semifinal matchup. Bryler Page, shot might have been blocked in the paint there by Jordan Wright, and instead it'll be Noah Shy who comes away with it for the Bulldogs. There's definitely an atmosphere here tonight, Jamal, in the Arc Arena. Yeah, the crowd is alive in effect. We got the cheerleaders from the Brooklyn side here. Everybody's cheering for both teams. Nice play there by Tessaria. A little ball fake, but his shot's a little too strong. It'll be Six Smith up to P Harris. Harris corrals it, puts it on the deck, has to dribble back out. Jack Six Smith on the right wing, up top to Brother Page. He pulls up three. Nice pick there by Harris. Shot no good. Ball tipped around. 
and it'll be rebounded by Jordan Wright, and the Bulldogs will take over. A quick pace here in the early going. McClay now trying to go baseline. He has to curl back. Six Smith cuts him off, and it'll be up top now to Wright. Wright going to call Coach John Baptiste offense here. Bounce pass inside to McLean. Up, oh, scoop layup. No good. Just trying to draw contact. Wild shot, though. And you can't be happy about that if you're Coach Baptiste. Good play by Alan Villar right there to not jump and just go straight up with the, with the offensive player right there. I mean, and it that calls the turnover. Five foot nine, uh, sorry, five foot ten McLean. Five foot nine right. So really trying to go up against the six foot seven uh, Villar. It's going to be tough in the paint there. Now gives out William Sixsmith. Open three, left wing. He knocks it down. And Sixsmith first three of the evening. And he banged that one home. You know, with William Sixsmith, all he has to do is get the first one. And if he gets the first one in the second, he starts to get hot. And then it's a problem for the Bulldogs. And you can see Coach Baptiste a little frustrated about that. The one guy you really can't leave open uh, from three. Now swung outside to Shy. Shy corner three. He responds right back. Nice uh, movement there by the Bear uh, Bulldogs, excuse me, and able to find Shy in the corner for the wide open three. Baruch just a little bit late to close out. Two early threes right there for Noah Shy. He has all six points for the Brooklyn College Bulldogs. And Coach Alisi quick to rotate his bigs. Quick straightaway three there by Jack Sixsmith. Off front rim, way short. Shy comes away with the rebound as Benjamin Boateng comes to the scorer's table to check in. We've already seen George Smith Jr. and we've seen Villar now in the game. Ball loose on the deck and it's going to be Wright who turns it over. I think he either slipped or just lost possession there, tried to regain, but Bryler Page will bring it into the front court for the Bearcats. Now Jack Sixsmith up top, William Sixsmith. He's going to pull straightaway three. Off no good. RJ Harris on the rebound. He can't lay it in. Ball knocked around. It'll be Tessariero again out for the Bulldogs. And the tempo keeps going. Well, deep three there by McLean, and he knocks that one down from the right wing. Tough sequence right now for the Bearcats. Those last two possessions aren't what they want to see on the offensive end. And back on the defensive end, back-to-back -back threes. Let's see if the Bearcats can answer here. Andre Harris has it on the right wing. Villar wants it underneath as he only has Jordan right on him. Big size mismatch. Now it's Villar with Spencer shifts over. Villar right hand, and he's able to finish. Nice move there by Villar. And it's going to be a 30-second timeout for Coach Alisi and the Bearcats. Almost six minutes gone here in the first half. Baruch trail 9-7, to seven, but Coach Alisi will talk things over. You're watching Baruch basketball on YouTube channel. Baruch Bearcats broadcasting. And Jamal, a quick, quick, frenetic opening, you know, first five minutes, first six minutes here. Baruch able to find their open shot, didn't knock it down, but really coming on with a little bit of a flurry in the last couple minutes. See, that's the most important thing for the Bearcats. You know, they're going to have moments where their shot isn't falling, or they're going to have sequences where they're not playing as cohesive as they, as they would like to. But the Bearcats have a lot of resolve. As they get down, they fight back, and they claw their way back into these games. And the Brooklyn College, every time they face the Brooklyn College, if it's not a close finish, it's usually a blowout. But most of the games have been a close finish. So I'm expecting something like that tonight. And most importantly for the Bearcats, get back on defense and just move, move, move. Get a stop, get back on offense and score, score, score. Brooklyn College already three or four from downtown, so feeling, feeling themselves a little bit from deep. And definitely, to your point, got to get back on defense, got to close out on some of these shooters. You already see Noah Shy two of two from three. It'll be McLean on right wing, William Sixsmith on him. It'll be Tessa Riero up top. Jack Sixsmith walks him out to the symbol. Now McLean comes off the screen. Shy looking for the pick right. McLean goes left. William Six on William Sixsmith. Now Shy has it into the lane. Has to go around. Boateng can't finish. Batted around. It'll be William Sixsmith that comes away with it. And great interior defense so far by both Villar and Boateng here in the early going. Both two skyscrapers out there, 6'6", six, 6'5", six, six, respectively. And they both could go out there and cause problems for the Bulldogs. Excellent ball movement, and Bryler Page knocks that down, and you can see some of the energy Benjamin Boateng already bringing to the court, catching and releasing in the midair, and able to find Bryler Page in the corner for that three. Right, and it all started with him going, going straight at Noah Shy and contesting that last layup, and then Bryler Page using that vertical to tap that ball over to William Sixsmith, and he was rewarded with that three-point attempt. McLean's floater no good, brought down by Harris as Boateng and Spencer both hit the deck underneath. Coach Alisi wants the tempo raised. Bryler Page has it right wing. Crossover move, trying to mm. bounce it inside to Boateng, and it's going to go last off, I think, either the foot of Spencer or McLean, and it's going to stay with the Bearcats. You got to like the aggressiveness. The aggressiveness. You got to like Bryler Page being aggressive out there. Now it's inside the page. High floater. He's able to knock that one down over Spencer. And the Bulldogs will look to the bench for the first time tonight as number 13, Nathan Josephat, comes to the bench to check into the game. Tessa Riero has it now. Gives it up top to McLean. Six Smith on him. Now it's outside to right. 
Bounce pass inside to Shy. Shy ball moved around. Nope, it's intercepted there by Sixsmith. And the Bearcats can set stuff up. Oh, man, Baruch almost turned it over. Nope, Jack Sixsmith will be able to bring it up. He has to hurry, though, because gets it over in 10 seconds, and now Coach Alisi wants him to slow things down. Yeah, on that last play, even as the ball was going out of bounds, it seemed like he was a little bit slow to get there, but luckily Coach Alisi was able to remind him, get the ball over the timeline. Ball swung around. Right wing three there for Bryler Page. He rattles that one home, and it's going to be a timeout for Coach John Baptiste and the Bulldogs. It's going to be a full timeout. For Brooklyn College, Bryler Page coming off the 30-point night last week against the College of Staten Island that clinched the number one seed, already starting off strong. He has eight in the early going, three of seven from the field, but two of four from downtown. Bryler Page is definitely leaving all everything out there on the court right now. He's balling, he's hitting his layups, he's putting up three-pointers. He definitely wants to go ahead and give his team an opportunity to compete in that championship game. He's doing all that he can right now. Eight of the first 15 for the Bearcats, having the hot hand, Jamal, as we said, coming off that 30-point game, really being in the catalyst in what was a feisty game for, against the College of Staten Island last week. Yeah, you know, anytime the Baruch Bearcats go against the Dolphins of Staten Island, it's very, it's always going to be a tough, a tough matchup. You know, they're coached well by Coach Tibbs, and that game is never going to be an easy one. But with Bryler Page's 30-point game, he was able to put the team on his back, and they were able to walk out victorious. So he's replicating some of that same that same energy he brought in that game here right now. And what's also interesting is that game what we mentioned was for first place in the conference last week. You almost have that playoff feel last week. So coming into this week with actual playoffs, you already basically played a, a playoff game even though you missed out on the quarterfinals. You had the bye, but that game meant so much. You have that feeling of intensity. You have that feeling of the pressure. So it's a great almost precursor to this actual semifinal here at the Arc Arena. You know, it's one thing I appreciate about college athletics, especially when it comes to basketball. It's only one game and you go home. So every possession matters. Every moment is heightened and you have to focus at every stop of the game. And there's an automatic bid at the line in the D3 tourney for the winner of the CUNYAC tournament. This is the semifinals of the CUNYAC and it's the Bulldogs between the Bearcats. It'll be Joseph out in the corner now. Gives it inside to Shy. Shy trying to work on Harris on baseline. Ball swung around. It'll be right up top. Takes the pick from Spencer. Has 12 on the shot clock. Gives it outside to Tessa Riero. Right wing. Crossover move. Step back three. No good. Short off rim. And it'll be Boateng who, who able to corral that rebound. And he'll run point as well as he brings it into the front court. Gives it off to Jack Sigmund. Deep inside to Harris. Now gives it outside to Bryler Page. He thought about it. Now Harris replaces Page. Harris corner three. Shot no good. Rebounded there by Tessa Riero. And he'll quickly push for the Bulldogs. Gives it to Joseph Fat now. Bounce pass underneath. Ball swung around the offensive end. Shy double team. He'll go into the paint. Gives it back outside to right. He's on the corner. Crossover move. Step back on Six Smith. Shot no good. A little too long. Knocked out of bound by Joseph Fat. And it'll go back to the Bearcats. It will be Zacchino to check in. And Page will have his first break of the evening. 11 18 remaining here in the first half. Good defense right there by Six Smith. Not losing his balance and able to get out to close out to the shooter and cause that shot to go out. It'll be Sixsmith now over to Zacchino. Bounce pass up to Sixsmith as Wright and Shy both came to him. Ball moved around. It's Zacchino in that soft spot right on the free throw line. Ball moved to the right wing, and now it's in the corner to Benjamin Boateng. He's double teamed in the corner, and he has to be careful. Ball's knocked away. It's a steal. Nope. Oh, wow, what a crazy play there as it looked like it was going to be number 30, Jade Spencer, who saved it, but he saved it right into the waiting hands of Benjamin Boateng, who has an easy layup and finishes off glass. See, great, great, a lot of credit to Benjamin Boateng on that play, staying active on the play, but most importantly, those are possessions right there that, you know, swing the, swing the game. That'll be right into the paint. He's able to finish off glass. Hard move there by Wright as he went strong into the teeth of the Baruch defense. You know, he had to get that one up because there was Boateng coming his way, Harris both over six, six foot five. It's a lot of height right there. Now Zacchino has it on left wing. He has Tessariero on him. Now Jack Sixsmith up top. Bounce pass into Tessariero. Looking for options. It'll be back up to Sixsmith. He might have had, had William Sixsmith in the corner. Now Andre Harris pull up. Shot right from the free throw line. No good off left rim. And Tessariero is going to bring it up for the Bulldogs. He's into the front court. Jack Sixsmith on him. Crossover move. Goes past the pick of Spencer. Pull up on by Tessariero. Sixsmith may, may have had a piece. And it's going to go on Boateng last. But the Bulldogs will have a fresh 30. You got to love the intensity from your Bearcats right now. They're playing with a lot of passion 
They're playing with a lot of aggressiveness, and you see Jack Sixsmith contesting that shot all the way through. It'll be Noah Shy to inbound underneath his own basket. Zacchino to cover the inbound. Right on the left wing has Andre Harris on him. It'll be Tessa Riero up top. Jack Sixsmith follows him as he goes across the court right up through the symbol. Now it's going to be Joseph out working on Sixsmith. Inside to Spencer. Ball. Ooh. They're going to say it was on the floor. It was on William Sixsmith. I thought it was actually going to be a jump ball there, Jamal. It looked like Sixsmith had his hands on the ball. Um, the ref that called it, though, it seemed to be behind Spencer there inside. And it'll go back. So the Bulldogs with uh, 20 seconds on the shot clock, 9.46 remaining here in the first half. Quick tempo here in the early going. It's right in the corner looking for options for the Bulldogs. Crossover move on Sixsmith. Now into the lane. Sixsmith takes one in the chest, hits the deck. It's going to go off him last, and it'll stay with the Bulldogs. Quick bang, bang play right there. No call. Goes back to the Bulldogs. William Sixsmith definitely stepping up the pressure. I got both teams right now, they want this game. Dangerous pass there. Joseph Haddock gets taken away as Sixsmith comes away with it. It'll be Jack Sixsmith into the front court. Now Zacchino has it. He puts it on the deck. Looking for options, trying to find Bryler Page in the far corner. Ball is knocked away either by, I think it was Spencer or Shy underneath, and it'll stay with the Bearcats. 24 seconds left on the shot clock. Yeah, some of those passes are very tough to make when you're in the air and you're trying to dish it off to somebody. You know, you want to... The defense to collapse, at collapse as you drive, but when you try to make those passes, it's very hard to do. And especially in playoff, playoff play, every play matters. It'll be Six Smith in the corner, has Shy on him, looking for options. He'll dribble out. Now it's Bryler Page up top, bounce pass inside. Boateng can't finish it, rebounded there by Shy, and it'll be Tessariero to walk things up. Couple hop steps up for him, and he'll give it up to Shy in the front court. Although, pa although Page and Boateng did not connect on that play, you seen the earlier they had. A little bit of the same motion going. You know, Botang back door while Bryler Page looks for him cutting. Now to be McLean over to Tessariero. Tessariero trying to find Spencer. A little alley-oop. Nope, no good. Off right rim. Spencer was looking for the foul call as he hit the deck. He has to get back, though, as Boateng's in, in transition. He gets fouled on the layup and will go to the line to shoot two. And the smart play there by Boateng, knowing that the big for the Bulldogs was on the still on the deck, he was right. able to go coast to coast and draw the foul on the other end. See, this is what you're talking about, playoff basketball, being aware of what's going on on the court, and a good play right there for Boateng to recognize that, go all the way to the rim. You know, at that point, once he goes up in the air, it's really hard to defend him. There's, with Spencer being behind the play at that point, it was only so much that he could do or any other play on the Bulldogs could do. And Boateng knocks down the first, extend the Baruch lead to seven as Jack Sixsmith and William Sixsmith both come to the bench. Andre Harris and Jack Reese come into the game. Jack Reese's first playoff moments out of his Bearcat career. Right, you know, when you see Jack Reese come into the game, you're definitely going to see this tempo pick up very, pick up a lot because he's very quick. He gets the ball into the front court fast, and he likes to go 100 miles per an hour. And we also saw a little bit of his op more of his offensive game last week against the College of Staten Island as it'll be McLean now, left wing for the Bulldogs. Takes the pick right from Spencer. Bo uh, Page follows McLean. Right wing three there from mm. Tessariero, who's able to knock that one down, and it cuts the lead to five. Nice shot there by Michael Tessariero from the right wing. Yeah, good defense by Jack, but better offense right there. And you can hear this gym get loud. A lot of Brooklyn fans here in the Arc Arena. Ball's going to go off of, I believe, Shy last. Maybe Melman has actually, I think, because he's holding his hand, shaking his finger. It seemed like one of those passes that uh, you can get a sprained finger right there from David Melman, who just checked into the game for the Bulldogs. It will be Baruch to inbound underneath their own basket. Right underneath to Bo uh, Barler Page. He's able to finish. Nice find there by Reese and a little lackadaisical defense from the Bulldogs. And as you can see right now, the Bulldogs... Right now they're trying to figure out what they need to do on the offensive end to get some buckets going right here. Ball's loose on the deck. It goes off McLean. It's going to be a jump ball, and it's going to go back to the Bearcats. Nice play there as I believe it was Zacchino on the deck fighting for that loose ball. And they're going to have to wipe stuff down. As Jack Reese will, do, will help us out here and wipe that one up. So with 8.07 left, Baruch lead. 
in what is the first semifinal here for the CUNYAC Conference as it's between the number one seed Baruch Bearcats and your number four seed Brook, uh, Brooklyn Bulldogs. Tomorrow night it will be the College of Staten Island hosting John Jay. And we're already here at the Arc Arena and the inbounds will be to Harris who will give it off the page and he'll walk things up. Harris brings it across the timeline. He has Melman on him as Harris goes right into the paint. And off glass and in he has Aquino in the corner but nice play there by Harris to get the open shot and finish off the glass. It'll be McLean to walk things up. Page picks him up at half court. McLean's going to go past Melman on the pick. McLean over. Boateng shot no good. And it'll be Andre Harris who comes away with it. And it's McLean holding his knee as he's on the ground. And we need a trainer here quick. He is in a good amount of pain just from vi visually seeing him over here. And with 7.40 left, we'll take our first break of the night. Baruch lead 23-14. to 14. You're watching Baruch Basketball on YouTube channel. Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting. In New York City, there is a place for people that want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. Where if you work hard, the possibilities are endless. A place to learn, train, and play. In that order, the City University of New York Athletic Conference. This is where it all comes together. Find your people, be a part of a team, and don't just play the game change the game champions aren't born they're built the city university of new york be exceptional and welcome back to the arc arena it is the cuniac semifinals between the bulldogs of brooklyn college and your baruch bearcats Anthony McLean able to walk off on his own power there as he hit the deck hard on that last layup attempt and it'll be Baruch's ball on the far side. Baruch leading by nine with 7.40 remaining. You know, it's always good to see players get up and there's nothing serious. There's no, there's no serious injury going on because, you know, McLean would have been a big loss for the Bulldogs as he's their leading scorer, was averaging a little bit under 15 points on the season. Yeah, I mean, anytime you lose a guy like that, I mean, obviously he's carrying the scoring load. Uh, good player at the line, shooting over 41% from three and 43% from the field. So he's just efficient when he's on the floor. So he was able to walk off. He's getting some work on by the trainer now. You can see him in some visible pain, though. And we'll see if he's able to get back into this game. Reese picked up here by Tessariero on the right wing, looking for options. It'll be Boateng. He hands off. Nope, instead gives it off to Harris. Look, It takes the pick from Boateng. Pull up from Harris. That's going to be short. Off back front rim. Glass and off. It'll be rebounded there by number 14, Alpha Ba, who just checked into the game, the six foot five sophomore from Brooklyn, New York. Right now, Harris is not having his best game, shooting 25% from the field with four points and four boards. Now it'll be Wright, has a couple picks there, chooses to go left around Ba, and it's gonna be a travel there with Wright in the paint, and it's gonna go back to the Bearcats, checking into the game for Baruch is number 33 and number three. William Sixsmith and Alan Villar as Joseph Zacchino and Benjamin Boateng will come to the bench. It'll be Briler Page to inbound, and you can already see Brooklyn College setting up in a full-court press, but Reese will be able to get it across the timeline. Definitely the, the Bulldogs want to slow down the Bearcats as they're gaining momentum, and the next bucket could go ahead and push this lead to double digits. And it'll be some battling underneath as Bog, a little two hands-on with Alan Villar in the paint, and it'll be a, a touch foul. Baruch will inbound from the far side. Excuse me, underneath, my apologies. It'll be Reese to inbound. He's covered by Shy. Looking for options. Couple picks set. It'll be Andre Harris up top. No, the inbound was trying to get to Six Smith in the corner. And a little, little telegraph there. That seems to be a, a lot of times Baruch's go to, and Brooklyn College is ready for that one. Yeah, especially in playoff play, you would expect every play that's, that you've ran so far in the season to be dissected and other teams to be waiting for them. And the Bulldogs showed you that right there. Briler Page into the lane. He almost loses it. He's on the deck. He's able to give it to Villar. What a play by Page underneath. As he's able to find Villar from the seat of his pants. And that's only the second best play Briler has made from the seat of his pants this season. And that right there is all experience right there. The senior right there showing you right now 
He wants this game. He wants to be in the championship, and he's making championship plays right now. Shy, no good. Rebounded there by Melman. He's off right rim, and it'll be Sixsmith who comes away with it. Jack Reese to push over to Bryler Page. Ball tipped away. And it's going to stay with the Bearcats, and they might have had a gripe. I couldn't tell from this angle, but it looked like Page may have gotten a hand on that one. I don't yeah. know if you saw it any better than I did. It, it looked like the, the pass kind of went behind him, so it was coming from the Brook Bear, the Brook Bear, Bearcats on that last play. So you could understand the frustration from the Brooklyn, Bear, the Brooklyn College Bulldogs right now. And it'll be Jack Sixsmith to inbound right in front of us here as Andre Harris has it up top. It'll be Jack Sixsmith up top, Tessarero on him, pick from Harris. Harris trying to get out of the way. Instead, he'll get the ball. Melman on him. Harris right into the lane. A little too strong, actually a little too short. My apologies. Page comes away with the steal. I don't even think the Bearcats even realize. Nope. Page into the lane, and he's fouled as he hits the deck hard. And I don't think the rest of the team even realized that he was getting, uh, he got the steal. Bradley Page almost on a one on three there, and the foul there is going to be on number 14. Alpha Ba, his second in uh, only limited action tonight. A few minutes and already two fouls for the sophomore. Page knocks down the first, and that'll extend the lead to 12 here in the early going of this ball game. A little bit, uh, exactly, excuse me, 14 minutes gone here in the first half. Baruch lead now by 12. We have an opportunity to make it 13. And he knocks down the second. Ryla Page right now, 12 points. Shooting 50% from the field and also from three-pointer. With two steals and three boards. And a big steal there. A hustle play for Page. Clearly not wanting his season to end. It'll be now right, goes right into the paint. Trying to finish over Villar. It'll be Spencer on the rebound. He's fouled and won. Jade Spencer, nice play there. Able to stay with his own shot and finish. And he'll go to the line now for the old school three-point play and an opportunity to cut this game back to 10. Yeah, it was a tough play right there. You know, Alan Villar just went up. It was a little bit out of position. And you had Spencer benefited from that, that foul and that easy bucket. Let's see if he could... Bring this lead, back, cut this lead back down to 10. He's all, no good. 0 for 3 from the line here is Spencer. And Baruch lead by 11. Jack Sixsmith into the front court. Calls for the pick. It'll be Villar on the pick. Nope. Instead, Villar will just back him down to the paint as Jack Sixsmith gives it off to William, who now has Bryler Page up top, working on Noah Shy. Now to Jack Sixsmith. Nice behind the back dribble. Now Page baseline. Hop step into the lane. Almost loses it. Alan Villar is able to corral it. William Sixsmith, seven on the shot clock. Pick there from Villar. Looking for options, it's Jack Sixsmith into the paint. Hop step, and can't finish. It rolls off the right rim. That was a tough play right there. The Bearcats trying to move around the ball, but the Bulldogs played good defense on that sequence. Melman shot no good, and he's fouled there by Villar on very minimal contact. And I got to say, I mean, regardless of which way, it's been really inconsistent. He saw William Sixsmith on the touch foul before. He saw a touch foul before in the paint. And then you saw Sixman hit the deck where there was no foul where it could have been blocking a few plays later. And then that time, Alan Villar seemed to go straight up, and that's what Coach Elise is talking to the officials about. Yeah, it's like one play, you get one play wrong for the other team. Next time back down, you get them back. And then the other team, it's the same thing, vice versa. You just need to find some consistency here. Now Boateng will check into the game. 27-17. Yeah, it was Baruch tough. Lead. It was tough right there for Alan Villar. You know, he's come in the game so far, four points, and made all of his two shots. But those two early fouls, you know, it definitely cost him some time out there on the court. And that will probably end his first half as the Bulldogs are able to cut the lead back to single digits. Baruch lead by nine, and they'll come with the full court uh, press, excuse me. And Boateng on the front court, now back to Jack Sixsmith looking for options. William Sixsmith, corner three is that option. Can hit, shot's no good, ball's out of bounds. It goes off Spencer last, and it'll stay with the Bearcats. It looked like Jade Spencer just had to grab the ball with two hands and right. seen maybe a little off balance and unable to corral it. <laughs> now it'll be Jack Sixsmith to inbound, looking for options. Has it to Harris on the baseline, now back up top to Bryler Page, full 30, so they're able to set up their offense as Harris now has it on the baseline. Brooke Bearcats definitely want to see him start getting going. Ball swung around. It'll be Boateng in the corner. Has Melman on him. Boateng's going to pull Ooh. it. He knocks that one down. And Benjamin Boateng will go a, a skipping back down the court. Extends the lead back to 12. Nice shot there by Boateng. And a rare occurrence. We've seen him pull up from up top. But a corner three from Boateng. 
And it's going to go off uh, Wright's leg last as he just loses the ball. He might not even actually went off his leg. I think he might have went off his foot or he just lost his dribble and it'll go back to the Bearcats. Great play right there. Benjamin Boateng, since he's come into this game, has made his presence felt. Four points, two rebounds, one assist. But he's an energy player that the Bearcats need. And he could do it on both ends of the court, both offensively and defensively. And that assist led to a Bryler three in the early going. Now it's Andre Harris on the baseline. He's working on Spencer. Looking for options. He pivots a few times, hands off to Sixsmith. Has options. It's Boateng. He's thinking about it again. Instead, he'll go into the lane. Finds Bryler underneath. His shot no good. Andre Harris on the rebound, and Baruch have a fresh 30. But instead, it'll be Sixsmith right into the lane. Back out to Bryler Page. Ball quickly moving in the Baruch offensive end. It'll be Harris into the lane, and he's able to rattle that one home, around it in, and Coach John Baptiste wants to talk things over. Baruch have their biggest lead of the night, 32 to 18. This is the CUNYAC semifinals between the number one seed, Baruch Bearcats, the number four seed, Brooklyn College Bulldogs, and Baruch putting the pressure on the Bulldogs right now, up by 14. You're watching Baruch Basketball on YouTube channel, Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting, and Jamal, you gotta be happy, the last probably you know, 10 minutes of Bearcats basketball has been a solid game. Rip ball moving quickly on the offensive end, and Baruch really able to extend the lead on an 11 to three, run, 11 to four run, excuse me, um, since about six, seven minutes remaining here in this half. Yo, it's, it's been amazing to see how, how much the Bearcats have been playing. Such a great level, you know. Once they get into games like this and they start to increase that lead past 10, they start to go ahead and extend the lead, extend the lead, extend the lead just a little bit more. So if the Bearcats can come out here, continue with this same trend, and Bryler Page continue to pay out of his mind right now, they'll definitely be in that championship game next week, I mean, this Friday. Yeah, like you said, Bryler Page having 12 in only 15 minutes of action. I mean, he looks like he's on a mission um, to lead this team into a championship. And I think that would be, what, his his third in, in four seasons? Right. I'm sorry, third in five seasons there. He had that year with the ACL, so he got that year back. But third in five seasons, really four. I and mean, it's very impressive for this uh, senior group here with, uh, I know Andre Harris only really in his second year with the Bearcats, but the right. two Sixsmith brothers and Bryler. I mean, I think it's amazing, especially for Bryler Page. He definitely doesn't want this to be his last dance. He wants, there's one more dance left, and that's the CUNYAC Championship. And it'll this be right, un right underneath his shot. No good. Spencer tries to tip it in. Page hits the deck. Loses a shoe in the process. Go, 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 go. And I'm sure, unsure what the stoppage is. I guess because he lost his shoe, they, they blew the whistle. Very interesting play that. I've not seen that before as it's going to be official timeout. Baruch have 27 on the shot clock. But Coach John Baptiste doesn't really seem phased. So maybe it's a rule, uh, unknown rule that... Uh, we just learned about tonight as it'll be William Sixsmith in the wing. Back up to his brother Jack. Now William in the paint. Gives it back to Jack. Bryler Page in the corner. Gives it off to William. Back to Bryler. Little two-man game here. Looking for options. The option was Boateng. Gives it off to Sixsmith. Baseline now finds Boateng. Inside Woo! further to Andre Harris. He's able to finish over Melman. And it's just been the, the extra pass has been exquisite tonight from the Bearcats. Time and time again, finding that extra pass specifically inside the paint for the easy layup. Especially that last one by Boateng. That one was very smooth. Almost didn't see it happen, and it just went really quickly to Andre Harris right there. Tessariero, he gets tripped on the floor, and it'll be a foul on number one, Jack Sixman. But to your point, Boateng now has two assists on the night. Both exquisite passes. The one for Bryler in the corner, and then that one where he was thinking about going up last minute, saw Andre Harris and able to find him for a wide open layup. And now that puts Andre Harris into double digits. He has 11 and 5 on 5 of 12 shooting tonight. And it'll be Spencer on the right wing for the Bulldogs. Now to McLean, who has checked back into the game. That's good to see Jamal as he seemed to be going down in a heap of pain before on that layup. Right. You know, we definitely want to see players get back into the game. No serious injuries. And we want teams at full strength, you know. Now it'll be right. Left wing three. His shot no good. Rebounded long, though, and Tessier has to come away with it. Boateng pokes it away as Tessariro showed him too much of the ball, and it'll go back to the Bulldogs when they got a fresh 30. See, that's a reward right there of solid play out there on the court. Benjamin Boateng is also playing. You know, he had you know he had playoff experience last year, and he's just taking that over to this year, and he's playing very well out there for the Bearcats. And a hard foul there on Bryler Page. It's going to be three shots 
on the foul. The shot was by number five, Jordan Wright. And I think Bryler Page just landed in his in Wright's landing zone, and that'll send him to the line for three shots. And he almost made that a four-point play, Jamal, as the ball seemed to go all the way around the rim before rolling out. And talking about that, Jordan Wright, good shot to get up right there, although he missed the first free throw. But the, the Bulldogs definitely want to – needs to find an answer here if they're going to stay into this game because right now the last time they scored was at the five minute mark and that was a free throw made and now Wright knocks that one down so two minutes and 50 seconds gone without that without Brooklyn putting any points on and in that time span Baruch is able to have been able to score themselves uh, four points and really uh, start to extend this lead against the Bulldogs so he knocks down two of three and they'll go with the full court trap now It'll be Jack Sixsmith to William Sixsmith, back to Jack Sixsmith. Sixsmith has to bring it up the court, though. Gives it off to William, and they're able to get it over the timeline with two seconds to spare. Now it's going to be Boateng on the baseline. I'm surprised he didn't want to pull there. Working on Spencer, looking for options. Nice spin move there. Now finds Andre Harris on the base, far baseline, and he's cut off there by number two, Noah Shy. And not quite in the bonus are the Bearcats, so they'll take it out underneath with Jack Sixsmith. Sixsmith inbounds, finds Boateng in the corner, but William Sixsmith up top, and Tessarero would be on him. Bryla Page on the right wing, ball swung around to Jack Sixsmith. Mm. And it's going to be a travel on Jack Sixsmith, and it'll go back to the Bulldogs with a minute and 42 remaining, so the opportunity for the Bulldogs to get some more points and keep cutting into this Baruch lead. They definitely need to cut it a little bit more, I think, before they get, they get into halftime and they talk it over with Coach Baptiste. No, they definitely want to go ahead and cut into this lead before halftime because they could go into halftime with a little bit of momentum here, and you don't want the Bearcats to start feeling good about themselves here. Ball is loose on the floor. Tessarero now has it up top. Wild cha uh, chain of events there. Now it's shy. Spencer tried to go up with it. Nice poke there by Jack Sixsmith, by William Sixsmith, excuse me, and it goes out of bounds, and it'll go back to the Bulldogs. But nice block there by Boateng. And you can see Boateng playing with a lot of energy tonight, going up high to block the six foot four Jade Spencer. The Bulldogs definitely felt Boateng's presence right there with the emphatic block and a little bit of flex right there, letting them know you coming into the Arc Arena to do battle with the Bearcats. Interesting play there, as they, they said, Baruch didn't have possession, so it's only five seconds now on the shot clock. Pull up jumper there by Wright is no good, and Boateng comes away with it. He's trying to clear some space as Tessarero and Spencer on him. Now Jack Sixsmith quickly brings some pace into the front court. Bryler Page, corner three. No good off back rim. Ball knocked out, though, by Boateng. It'll go into the Brooklyn bench, and it'll go back to the Bulldogs. 59.3 remaining here in the first. Baruch lead by 14. And it'll be Tessarero who walk things up for the Bulldogs. It gives it off to McLean. Looking for options. Pick there by Spencer on the right. McLean now high arcing floater is good. Knocks that one down. Bryler Page now has to deal with the Bulldog press. It'll be Boateng, now Jack Sixsmith, who can walk it across the timeline and ensure no 10 seconds. So it'll be Tessarero on him as Sixsmith's on the Baruch symbol. 30 seconds remaining here in the first half. And then as the time goes down, we talked about it a minute ago, the Bearcats definitely need to get some buckets to keep the momentum going their way and not to allow the Bulldogs to gain any momentum going here into halftime. Now it has to be pulled by Bryler Page. His three rattle knocks that one down. Nothing but the bottom of the net. And now they have to push. Ten seconds here for the Bulldogs. McLean has it. And that's the person you want with the ball in their hand right now at the time as the time the clock is going down. Two seconds. McLean loses it, and it's gonna that'll do it for the first half. Bryler Page. Full court heave hits the ceiling, and that will do it. So a huge three there by Bryler Page. Extends it to 15 before the half, and a great defensive sequence there by the Bulldogs. On, I mean, luckily for the Bearcats, Bryler Page really able to bail out the offense as he hits a contested right wing three. And Bryler Page, what a first half for this senior in what is probably what is going to be his last game here at the Arc Arena. Yeah, definitely his last game at the all we talk, We're talking about 15 points, three boards, three steals, shooting over, shooting 45% from the field and 50% from three-pointer. Followed up by him is Andre Harris, who's, who has 11 points, five boards, and showing a little bit over 50, 40, excuse me, 
And following that, Benjamin Botang, four points. Three rebounds, two assists, one block. But most importantly, he's that presence that they, they, they need out there right now as he's only come into the game and he stayed out there for the Bearcats, especially in those last sequences. Yeah, I think also you kind of see the, the rotation that Coach Alisi is going to go with for the playoffs now. Um, your bench is really going to be Bilar, Boateng, Zacchino, and Reese. Right. And it's and, and um, obviously Smith, six, I mean, the lineup's been pretty consistent, but Boateng, I mean, to your point there, Jamal, playing the most minutes for the, at the five, this game 12 compared to 7 for Villar. And Smith only playing the first 30 seconds of the game. Boateng, what a jolt of energy he's been since he's come into the game. Now he's definitely been a jolt of energy there at that, there that, that center position for the Bearcats. But it's also a testament to their depth, right? Because George Smith Jr. was in this game early on. You know, he didn't get a lot of minutes so far in the game. He had to come out early. And then Boateng and Villar in this place have just stepped up big. You know, Villar with four points. Boateng with four points. And they're all a little bit over 6'5". So with that, with that respectively, you know, you're always going to have somebody in the middle, that middle right there. You're going to have to contest the rim and turn shots away at any time. Yeah, and then, I mean, you're talking about, we, we mentioned Paige and Harris right at the beginning of the halftime show here. They have 26 combined. Brooklyn College as a team only have 22. So if you're going to let these guys score, and I have to assume, that's what Coach John Baptiste is talking about in that locker room. You're going to let these guys score pretty much, I wouldn't say at will, but they're getting clean looks. They're both shooting over 40% from the field. You're going to let these guys score at the manner that they're scoring. You're not going to stop this Bearcat team because this is with only William Sixsmith with only three, and only three other players have right now scored for Baruch. We haven't even seen really uh, Jack Reese get any buckets. Jack Sixsmith can, can start getting hot, and we know Zacchino has a hot hand from three when he's been able to pull it. So the fact that only these two guys are really going off, A, I guess, could be for John Baptiste, Coach John Baptiste, saying, you know, we still have a shot because if we could just limit what these two guys are putting out, we have a chance to win this ball game. But from the other hand, how are we going to stop these guys? Because right now, Andre Harris getting into the lane, Baruch as a team really finding that extra pass and, and being able to finish at the rim. And then when you're talking about Bryler, three of six from downtown, 50%, that's impressive but also shooting an impressive 45% from the field. I think if you're the coach of the Bulldogs right now, it's definitely hard to think about what you're going to tell your team about how to slow down these, these players, especially Bryler Page and Andre Harris. You know, it was, I think it was very tough for the Bulldogs to lose McLean as they hadn't scored till that point, until he got back in, you know. And McLean is definitely a player that they need. But most importantly, one thing that is there to note out, for three pointers, the Bulldogs have gone four for nine. So they've got they've experienced some success at the three point shot. Maybe they go more to it here in the second half. But that'll be one of the easiest ways for them to start closing this lead here. But if the Bearcats are going to continue to play like that, the way they are, especially with Bradley Page and Andre Harris leading the way, they're going to be very hard to beat. To your point, yeah, I think in the early going, they were cruising from three the Bulldogs were they were able to find the open man and Baruch were slow and we've seen it even on some of their misses a little bit slow to close out on the three-point shooter the thing that's been baffling me a little bit is you have you're playing almost a four guard lineup with the Bulldogs they're trying to go into the paint against like we said Boateng who's providing energy Villar at six foot seven guys like Shy, Tesserero, McLean and Wright all coming in at six foot and under, it's going to be really tough for them to finish at the lane over some of that size. We even see Spencer get rejected by Boateng at only six at, at six foot four. So granted, that gives them a little size, but I don't know why they kind of got away from their hot hand of shooting the threes early and really trying to go inside the paint where I think Baruch have enough depth inside. Even Andre Harris, who's there four and plays as a wing defender, right, is six foot six. So it's going to be tough if you can get around the perimeter defenders to really finish at the rim. And I think that's why you see these Bulldogs shooting only 25% at the end of the first half. Yeah, I think there's one thing to notice, too, during the game. I think the reason why they're trying to go to the lane is they're trying to open more up, open up the three-point shot a little bit more. Because we see a lot of the Bear, I mean, excuse me, the Bulldogs offense, that dribble penetration, try to get somebody to collapse and then kick it out. There's been a lot of passes from shots in the air. So I think if the Bulldogs can settle down a little bit, and continue to get into the lane. I think they should keep going to the lane. But I think it's a matter of fact of that McLean going down as their leader. For some reason, they seem rattled after that. And they really couldn't recover from that point. So I'm thinking with him fresh and coming back for the second half, we don't know 
where he's at health wise. We know, but we know he's out there playing the best that he can. If he could come back out here and lead his team, this can be a closer game. But if, if they can't stop the Bearcats, then this one could potentially go to the Bearcats. Yeah, I mean, already 15 and a half. You got to strike early. The, I think the first five minutes of this third, uh, second half, excuse me, are going to be the biggest of the game. You have to cut into this lead, and you can't let the Bearcats extend. The Bearcats get this to 20. You're going to see guys that Coach John Baptiste, you're going to see guys on the Bearcats in the game that Coach John Baptiste does not want in the game. Mm -hmm. Some of the more of the depth that the Bearcats possess. And if you're Coach John Baptiste, and, and me personally, I think you got to combat this with maybe more size. I think you played well when you had Melman and Spencer in. I would like to see Ilir Drecci come into the game as well, six foot seven junior from Staten Island, and uh, see if they could turn things around. We're about nine minutes away from the start of the second half. We're going to take a five-minute break here at the Arc Arena. You're watching the CUNYAC semifinal, first semifinal between the Brooklyn Bulldogs and your Baruch Bearcats. Baruch Lee, 37-22. We'll be back in about five minutes to preview the second half. You're watching Baruch Basketball on YouTube channel, Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting.
And welcome back to the ARC Arena. You're watching the first semifinal between the Brooklyn College Bulldogs and your Baruch Bearcats. It is the CUNYAC semifinal and the opportunity to go to a championship game on Friday at Hunter College against the winner of still yet to be played. College of Staten Island and John Jay. That'll be tomorrow night, but Jamal, a lot of time left in this one. Baruch lead by 15, and Brooklyn have their work cut out for them. A big, I think, first five to seven minutes here of the second half. Yes, this is going to be very crucial for both teams. For the Bulldogs, you definitely want to get back into this game and slow down the Bearcats. And if, the, if you're the Bearcats, you definitely want to ride that momentum you had going into halftime, and you want to come out here and put on the pressure onto these Bulldogs here. You know, they're not going to be a tough out. So execution is going to be of the utmost importance for both teams. Let's see, as we get back to action, how both teams fare in the second half. So it'll be Spencer, Tessarero, Shy, McLean, and Wright, the same starting five. And for the Bearcats, it'll be the five that they ended the first half with. The six Smith brothers, Andre Harris, Bryler Page, and Benjamin Boateng, it'll be Tessarero now over to Shy. Ball swung around, it'll be McLean. McLean having that injury scare in the first half. Happy to see him back on the court. It'll be Shy now working on Harris. 15 seconds left on the shot clock. Nice spin move there by Shy. Able to get a few mm. players up. And his shot, I think, was might have been uh, was blocked there by Boateng. And it'll be Bryla Page into the lane. And he's able to finish with the right hand. And Bryla Page picking right up and, and we where he left off in the first half. And we talked about this, Dave. It's going to be definitely important for both teams to come out and execute you seen right there on both ends of the court you seen the block by Harris right there and another block there by Boateng and Baruch bringing that defensive intensity here in the early going now be Bryler Page pull up corner three he rattles that one home and Bryler Page is just exuding energy right now as he gets the first five and extends the lead to 20 and if Brooklyn College are not careful this one will be over at the beginning of the second half. Pull up three there by McLean. He knocks that one home, and it'll be a timeout for Coach John Baptiste. He wants to talk things over. Coach Alisi visibly upset with his defensive effort, his team's defensive effort there, and I could see why as McLean just a, a step back crossover and able to rattle that one home. Baruch lead by 17, a little bit more, uh, more than a minute gone here in the second half. You know, that's a very tough matchup right there for William Six Smith you know, to guard McLean from the Bulldogs. But what a way to come back and answer down on the other end of the court. McLean has definitely been a bright spot for the Bulldogs this evening. And he, they're definitely going to need him if they're going to pull this game out. A nice play there by McLean, waiting to see him get the hot hand. That was only, he has now eight um, halfway to his scoring average for the season, averaging about 15 a game for these Bulldogs. And it'll be Page to inbound, and you'll see the full court press. The Six Smith brothers trying to find some be the options, and they are into William. Now over to Jack. McLean on him. Jack crossover move, brings it up the full length of the court, into the front court, and it'll be Andre Harris on the symbol. Handoff now to Page. Page thinking about the shot. Andre Harris with the pick. Nice pick there left by Harris. Page into the baseline. Gives it to Harris, left wing. Step back three, nope. Instead, he'll give it off to Boateng. Ball's loose. Boateng hits the deck. Gives it to Tessariero. Almost football tackles him. And the foul there is going to be at number 25. Boateng, almost a smart play there. Instead of letting Brooklyn get into the transition, could have been a dangerous foul, yeah. but it was a smart foul. Not really what you want to see. Wrap him up by the ankles, but you, you like how he stopped him in transition. like the idea of stopping him in transition, right. not the uh, execution. Yeah, you know, definitely a play right there you want to settle down a little bit on because that could have been called as a tech, you tech know. Or flagrant even. Very dangerous. Honestly, you're not going to see a lot of calls there just because it's not up around the head area. Three there by McLean off right wing. Shot no good. Jack Sixsmith comes away with it. Tessa Riero almost had a three go in on the same possession. Tessa Riero, nice play on the def transition defense. Now it's up to Spencer. Spencer has Boateng blocked by Harris. He's fouled by Boateng, and the foul there will be Boateng second. Nice D there by Harris. Boateng falling for that pump fake, though, and as Spencer was able to get him up in the air and will go to the line to shoot two. Yeah, Spencer was successful on that play, again, going to the line for two, but he's been un unsuccessful at the free throw line tonight, and he's gone 0 for 3. And he knocks down his first free throw of the evening. But it was good a couple minutes ago as they were setting up for the free throw. You saw Bryla Page in there gathering the troops, you know, just talking to them. 
just trying to settle everybody down. You know, they jumped out to an early, they extended the lead by five early, go, early on in the first, in the second half. And, you know, right now they've kind of letting Brooklyn get back into it. And Spencer knocks that one down. So able to cut it back to 15 is Brooklyn College. The press is on as Benjamin Boateng now to Bryler Page. Gives it off to the Sixsmith. Now up to Jack Sixsmith. Jack Sixsmith's going to push. Bounce pass to Harris. Able to Good lay pass. it in easy. Good pass. Good pass by Jack Sixsmith on that play right there. But a great Great poise by the Baruch Bearcats offense to work past that press. Nice steal there by Sixsmith. He picks the pocket of McLean. And now Jack Sixsmith gets it into the front court. Couple behind the back dribbles. Gives it off to Harris. Ball swung around looking for Sixsmith. Gives it off to William. Now the pick there to Boateng. And the foul there is going to be on number four, Anthony McLean. That's going to be, oh, excuse me, it's going to be on 30 on the come around. And that's going to be on Jade Spencer. That's his first. Very impressive, actually, for the big man. Yeah, you think by now Spencer will probably be in foul, foul trouble, you know, the, looking at the people he has to guard. And it'll be Jack Sixsmith now. Gives it off the page on the right wing, and it's going to be a travel, and it'll go back to the Bulldogs, and definitely a, a little bit of a momentum swing potentially for the Bulldogs if they can take advantage. It'll be right to walk things up for Brooklyn. Like we talked about it earlier in the game, you know, every play, every moment, every possession matters. So not the play you want right there for Page, but let's see if they go back on the defensive end and get the ball back. Low pass there by McLean to right as that's knocked away, and it'll be Boateng who comes away with it, and he'll push the Rock into the front court. He turns, has Spencer on him, gives it to Jack Sixsmith. Sixsmith trying to come into the lane. Instead gives it out right wing to Bryler Page, back to Boateng. Now Page into the lane. He's fouled as he hits the deck hard. The foul there is going to be at number three, Tessarero. His first. He's looking over at the ref to see what the call was. While they try to sort that out, Ryla Page will be trying to go ahead and add two more points as he has 20 points, three boards, three steals on the evening. And shooting over 50% from field goal, I mean from the field, and as well as three-pointer. He's off on the first free throw. And a big Brooklyn contingent here, Jamal, tonight as Page hits the second. You can see them maybe getting a little restless as this game wears on if Brooklyn can't cut into this deficit. It's now at 18 for the Bearcats. If there's one thing you know, man, Brooklyn always going to come out and represent. As Sixsmith comes away with the steal, ball's loose. It'll be Sixsmith who gets it, gives it off to his brother William, and Bryler can set up the offense here. And Coach Elise, he wants to slow things down. Bryler will be on the left wing. Double pick there, takes the pick from Harris. Bryler Page, crossover dribble into the lane. No good, rebounded there by Spencer. And it'll be shy to push over to Tessarero. Now into the corner. I think that was knocked away. I had my vision blocked a little bit there. It was knocked away, and it'll stay with Brooklyn. I think it might have been either, I think it was Boateng or Harris who got a hand on that one. Yeah, I think as the pass got in there, I think it was Boateng who was able to tap that out. But more importantly, if you're the Bearcats, that last offensive possession is clearly not one of the better ones you had on the evening. So getting back to ball rotation may be beneficial for them. Spencer, ugly shot there over Harris. And I, I, I mean, I would give him that shot all day. Right. It's not, it's not going to fall at poor shot selection if, uh, if you're the Bulldogs there. And now it'll be Jack Sixsmith into the lane. Gives it out. Bryler Page has the hot hand. He'll pull just short as McLean comes away with the rebound. He turns around. He has space to push. Nice behind the back dribble there by McLean. He turns around. Over to Tessarero, trying to find Shy inside. Knocked away there by Boateng, and it'll stay with the Bulldogs. 20 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Now the Bearcats got the energy. They got that pep in their step, and they're moving on defense. As you see, that Coach Elise, has definitely gone with the experienced players out there. Spencer into the lane. He's able to finish nice up and around by Jade Spencer. And you got to wonder... Is this going to be the lineup that Coach Alisi goes with for the rest of the night? Because they have been effective when they've been on the court. Ooh, dangerous pass there. Now Andre Harris, free throw line jumper. Tessa Riero on the defense, no good. Boateng over the back on Spencer. And you got to be careful if you're Jade Spencer right there. It seemed like he might have stepped over. 
And it'll be Velo it seems like he stepped over Boateng, and I think Boateng was wondering what that was about. You know, it's always a little bit of bad blood between these two. You know, at the first game here at the Arc Arena came down to the wire, and the second game over in Brooklyn College came down to the wire. So both of these teams definitely. And that's going to send Spencer to the line. As it seemed like he was losing possession, and then as he tried to push shot, it got fouled, and it'll go two shots for Spencer. Definitely the guy you want at the line, though. And to your point there, Jamal, I think Hunter College is Baruch's oldest rival, but I think in the last few years, Brooklyn has by far been their strongest rival. You're talking about back-to-back -back championship games against each other. Two games this year, won a three-point game here at home, won a loss in overtime at their place, and now meeting again in the playoffs, and you can just... There's a dislike for each other. And right. I love it because I'm not in it. Right. But I also think that they might love it because they feed off of it. And you don't need energy. You don't need to be um, told to get up for this game because I think you naturally get up for this game just be just based on the strength of these squads in the last few seasons. And then you have moments like this when you look out and you see one team cheering for Brooklyn, another team cheering for Baruch. We love to see all of the, all of the community come together and play big. A nice pass there. Oh, sloppy play there by Villar as he just gave it right to Tessa Riero. And the foul there is going to be on number 15, Andre Harris. And there's a lot of noise going on here. And it's going to be a full timeout for Coach Alisi. He wants to talk things over and maybe settle down the crowd. The lead is cut to 14. Nothing to worry about yet for Baruch. But if you're Baruch, you got to be looking over your shoulder and say it was once 18, so you got to slow things down. Get some easy buckets with 14.56 remaining. Baruch lead, 45-31. You're watching Baruch basketball on the CUNYAC semifinals between Brooklyn College and Baruch on YouTube channel. Baruch Bearcats broadcasting at Jamal. It's been sloppy. That's what I'll say. It's been sloppy the last couple minutes. A few foul shots either way and uh, just a wild crowd. And we can see the whole gym is now pretty much full. A few seats left. People are even sitting on the stairs. So... A great contingent from Brooklyn. You got to love how they showed out. We even have some uh, professional Brooklyn players as John and Musa, last year's Brooklyn Nets first round pick, is in the building. So Brooklyn definitely having some support here tonight at the Arc Arena. Nah, Brooklyn has definitely come out to show out and show love and support for their Bulldogs. But the Bearcats fans are here. They're making noise as well. And they're going to do everything in their power to cheer their team on to victory. It's a bad sequence right there. You know, it's a tough play for Villar, but the best thing he could do is put that in the back of his mind and keep going. So it'll be Brooklyn's ball on the far side. A smart time out there by Coach Alisi. Maybe take the edge out of the crowd a little bit as they're noticeably quieter here at the Arc Arena. Now McLean, now right wing, goes past Sixsmith, bounces inside to Spencer, around Bryler Page. Not enough oomph on that one, a little short off near rim. And it'll be six minutes to walk it up for the Bearcats. Good play by Page right there, realizing you couldn't go up and try to contest that shot. Just stand there, try to take the charge. He's done did, did, did a lot of that this season. Six minutes into the paint, almost throws it away. Bryler Page able to pull it down one hand. Little Odell Beckham in that one. Now Harris, pull up jumper, no good. Regets his own rebound, and that'll give him a fresh 30. And he has to get it outside. It's going to be Jack Sixsmith now to Bryler Page. Right into the lane. Floater is good. And I don't know how you don't attack the defender there. Tessa Rara went outside to cover Sixsmith. The guy's got 23 points, and you're backing away from him. Hey, I don't, I don't understand that play right there. But you give him a little bit of separation, Bryler Page. He's going to put that float up and knock it down every time. Now McLean to Tessa Rara behind the back dribble. And Tessa Rara wanted the call instead of getting back on defense. Gives it inside to Harris. Looking for options. He pulls up. Free throw line jumper again, no good. Harris not feeling a little cold from the field right now. And Noah Shy crossover move, goes by Harris. Blocked, might have been by Harris. I mean, excuse me, by Villar. And that was interesting. He might have hit the net on that block. Yeah. And I can see maybe that being a goaltend. There's been a lot of calls that have been let go so far in this game right now. If they've been letting it slide, but then at odd reason points of the game, They'll call like touch fouls. It's very interesting. Villar, he stripped as he goes up with a Tessarero slides. He gives it off to McLean. McLean going to go one on one with Sixsmith right into the lane. McLean off the glass, able to knock it down. Wow, McLean going all the way to the basket on Jack Sixsmith right there. Jack did all he could, but McLean was just better on that play. Sixsmith inside. He gets it stolen. It's Tessarero comes away with it. 
Coach Alisi wants his team to get back on defense. Pull up McLean, three, left wing, way off, no good. Right rebound, no good, and it'll be Villar on the rebound as Tessarero trying to contend with the six foot seven. Villar, Bryler Page through his hands, and it's going back to Brooklyn, and this is now what Baruch need. As Brooklyn, you can start feeling the momentum going to their side. Brooklyn is definitely feeling like they can climb back into this game, and they see a target, and they're going for it. That Bearcats lead is in trouble, although they're up by 14 right now with 12 minutes left to go in the second half. Anything could happen. That lead can go bye-bye. Now right, pull up jumper. Off glass, knocks that one down as he hits the deck. Unorthodox offense there for the Bulldogs and they were able to finish off glass. Right. Baruch's lead trimmed to 12. Baruch right. need a basket as Boateng, who just checked into the game, has the ball back. And you can almost sense that Brooklyn College may have more fans in the building than Baruch does. They definitely brought their, their fans with them and it's almost working to their advantage. Pull up by Andre Harris, able to get that one rattle home. And Coach Alisi calls timeout and he wants to know where the foul call is on that. It's going to be a 30 second quick timeout for the Bearcats. And you got I'm actually been really impressed about how Coach Alisi has been using his timeouts on both occasions, maybe really doing it to slow down some of the momentum from the Bulldogs and quiet down this crowd a little bit. Baruch's lead back to 14, 49 35. You're watching the CUNYAC semifinals between the Bulldogs of Brooklyn College and the Bearcats of Baruch on YouTube channel. Baruch Bearcats broadcasting. Yeah, it was a great move by Coach Alisi to call that earlier timeout and a timeout now. You know, they say basketball is just a game of just putting the ball in the hoop, but it's also strategy. You know, realizing that the momentum is falling out of your team's hands, you got to slow down the momentum, you got to slow down the other team. You call a timeout. On the next play, after they score a bucket, call another timeout. Get them ready to go back on defense. Let them know what they got to do on offense. And remember, strategy, strategy, strategy. And don't forget, the CUNYAC Finals will be between the winner of this game, Baruch and Brooklyn, and the winner of tomorrow night's game between Staten Island and John Jay at Hunter College. CUNYAC advises that tickets are free for the championship on Friday, but all fans must register in advance. That is first come, first serve. Tickets are separate for the women's final and the men's final. The women's final is going to be the number one seed, Hunter College Hawks, versus the number two seed, Brooklyn College Bulldogs. And their tickets are going to sell out quickly, so make sure you get yours. As now McLean has it in the front court for the Bulldogs. Takes double picks from Shy and Spencer. Now Shy into the lane. Gives it outside. Right. Nice close out from Pryler Page as Wright knocks that one down. And the lead's only 11 here at the Arc Arena. Oh, it's Tang up to Page. Page lost it off his own foot. Tessarero comes away with it. He's going to circle back. Bring it back out. Now go into the paint. Now right in the corner. He's going to pull another three around and out. No good. And I think the lid might have come off that, that Brooklyn College section if he knocked that one down. Yeah, right is definitely back-to-back. -back. I mean, we took him out of three, five points for the Bearcats. The last five points for the Bearcats. So right is definitely answering the call. And the Bulldogs on a bit of a run, as Jamal said. Jordan Wright really leading the way. Now Andre Harris has it in the post. Back out. Now Sixsmith thinks about the shot. One dribble. Pulls up three. Shot no good. Boateng on the tip. Can't finish. Ball still loose. It'll be Spencer on it. He's double teamed. Now Wright has it. And Baruch looking a little lackadaisical now on both ends of the court. Bounce pass trying to get it from Tessarero. Back to Shy. It'll be a kicked ball on number two, on number one, excuse me, Jack Sixsmith. And Melman will come to the bench to check into the game. It'll be Tessarero up top. Gives it off to McLean. The pick from Melman. Double team here from Boateng and Sixsmith. Ball's loose. Nope. It'll be McLean who gets it back. High floaters. Good. And now it's a single digit game here at the Arc Arena. McLean is putting the, the Bulldogs on his back right now. 12 points. 50% over from, from three pointer and 45% from the field. And coming back from injury in that first half. We talked about it during halftime. You know. McLean is a player that the Bulldogs definitely need to get involved in. He's done just that. Brother Page shot no good. His floater, and it looks like Shy's on the ground as he can't get back, and he is slow to get up. Noah Shy is down. Now it's going to be right into the lane. High arcing shot, no good. And Melman's going to foul Boateng on the rebound. A hard shot there as Boateng took the hit, hit the deck hard, and Shy struggling to get to his feet. It seems to be him favoring. 
I don't know, it's his hip maybe or it's one of his upper thighs and Shy will stay in the game, but you can see him definitely in visible agony. I think it's that right leg there, Jamal. Yeah, once he starts to get the blood flowing again, he probably just walk it off. But the Bearcats need to find an answer right now because these Bulldogs are coming and they're coming in a hurry. Now William Sixsmith takes the pick from the left wing. Now gives it off to Boateng, looking for options. Boateng, pull up shot. No good, rebound there by Melman off to Tessarero. Ball into the front court. It's gonna be McLean into the lane. High arcing shot, no good. It'll be Boateng on the rebound. Gives it off to Jack Sixsmith. And on the offensive end for Baruch, definitely not the shot you want with Boateng pulling up from 16. Sixsmith thinking about pulling the three. Instead gives it back to his brother Jack. Boateng to the corner, William Sixsmith. Shot way short. Shy hits the deck, it's gonna be a foul on Boateng as he, nice sportsmanship there, helps up Noah Shy, who's been visibly hurt. And Briler Page coming to the bench for a quick breather. And it's tough right now because for Benjamin Boateng, I, I think it's a good substitution by Coach Alisi as Boateng has four personal fouls. Probably would want him for down the stretch. And now Joe Smith Jr. coming into the game. Very interesting. George Smith Jr. right now wearing number 11. I, I don't know what happened there. So that'll be a timeout here on the floor. Very interesting. I've never really seen that as a player coming out with a different jersey on. Yeah. And that's the first time we've seen him wear 11, I think, all season. As Baruch now lead 49 to 40. But Jamal, it has gotten interesting here in the Arc Arena. It almost feels like a road game. Brooklyn College clearly has the right side of the stands, and they've been making some noise and helping their team come back in this effort. Once down 18, Bur Brooklyn has cut it to nine. With 9.17 remaining, you're watching the CUNYAC semifinal between the Bearcats of Baruch and the Bulldogs of Brooklyn College on YouTube channel, Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting. Now as the Bearcats have this timeout, they definitely want to regroup and definitely find a way to get to answer this, this Brooklyn, Brooklyn Bulldogs charge right now as they've been balling and they've come back so far. At one point, the Bearcats were up, 20 at, with, were up by 20 points early on in the second half. And now, they only lead by nine points with a little bit under 10 minutes remaining in this elimination game. Winner will go on to play at the CUNYAC final championship game and an opportunity to get an automatic berth into the ECAC tournament. So, so we just got word actually why George Smith Jr. is wearing 11 and for a sensible reason. He think he got bloodied in the nose a little bit in the early going, which actually explains his limited involvement in the first half. So he has to wear number 11 now as his jersey's a little messed up. But either way, Jordan Wright's three, no good. Six Smith on the rebound. Melman all over him, and he's going to get called for the reach and a sloppy foul there if you're Melman. That's going to be his second. Nine minutes remaining here in the ball game. And it'll be Six Smith to inbound. McLean thinking about the press, instead falls back. It'll be Tessarero to pick up Jack Six Smith at the, at the three-point line. And you can hear the crowd get loud. We have the Brooklyn College cheerleaders behind us, and the Brooklyn College has taken over half of the arena here tonight. Very impressive showing from the Bulldog faithful. Six Smith has to pull back. William Six Smith now to Jack. Seven seconds remaining. Crossover move. Finds the cutting. Zakino, who loses the ball as he was trying to get it to Smith inside. And you got to wonder where some of the points are going to come from. Andre Harris a little bit cold right now. Zakino hits the deck, and the foul there is going to be on him, actually. As it looked like him and McLean both hit the deck for the ball. Zakino a little too over aggressive. Andre Harris feeling a little cold, though, Jamal. You got to wonder where the points are coming from because William Sixman just not, has not been his usual self tonight. Only three points on one of five from the field, all three pointers. Yeah, definitely not the game that you want from Harris or. William Sixsmith. You and definitely want to see them in this final stretch, you know, play big and start to get that, that ball to find the bottom of the net. McLean misses the first of the one and one. Andre Harris on the rebound. A big opportunity there for the Bulldogs to cut back into the deficit. 
Right now, the Bearcats need to find an answer here on offense. As you can hear the chance from the Bulldogs fans, they want defense, and they'll see what's going to happen. George Smith Jr., pull-up shot. Around and out, no good. Shy on the rebound. Jamal, I mean, Baruch haven't scored in quite a while. Uh, really on a, on a drought here if you're the Bearcats. Haven't scored for in the last almost four and a half minutes since, the, since Andre Harris knocked down a jumper at the 12-11 mark here. We're at 7.50 remaining here in the ballgame. Baruch lead by nine. Jack Sixsmith hard into the paint. A little too strong as McLean comes away with the rebound. You can see some tired legs also for the Bearcats as now it's into right inside. Has to kick it outside to Tessarero. Back to right. Corner three. Andre Harris closing out on him. Wright knocks it down. Nice shot there by number five, Jordan Wright. And you're talking about fatigue out there. You know, Harris, Six Smith, William, both Six Smith brothers, and Benjamin Boateng playing over 20 minutes in this game. And that's going to get Page back to the scorers' table. They need some instant offense. Six Smith thinks about pulling. Instead, we'll give him to his brother, Jack. Looking for options. Andre Harris is that option. Crossover move. Working on shy. Spin moving to the lane. Ball stripped to William Sixsmith. And Get one. In Count it. And the foul. And that was an effort play by Sixsmith. And just when I was curious where the points are going to come from, it'll be William Sixsmith going to the line to shoot a free throw and get the old school three-point play. Not the usual variety that we see normally from Sixsmith as George Smith Jr. will come to the bench. Ryler Page back into the game. It's such a great feeling when you can see the team just find a way to get that ball to score because the Bearcats, like we were talking about, about a four-and-a-half-minute drought there of scoring. And William Sixsmith with just that scoop shot. Let's see if he connects on the free throw. And he does. So extends the lead back to nine. And, you know, very commendable from the senior from Plainview, New York. You're talking about a guy who not maybe not having the best of games and able to rebound, knock down a shot when you need it, and go to the line. And it's going to be a turnover. Stepped out of bounds right in front of the bench. So Brooklyn College don't want to give up too much of this momentum as he's been playing well. Now they've been playing well, excuse me, as Melman will come to the bench. Jade Spencer back into the game and very curious. Baruch actually playing an unorthodox lineup for them. Only one big, and that big happens to be Andre Harris. Rarely see him playing alone. He's with the Six Smith brothers, Joseph Zacchino and Bryler Page on the floor. Now Page has it, now gives it up to Harris. Ball swung around. Jack Sixsmith takes the pick from Harris. Crossover move. Six Smith into the lane. Off class, no good, but he's fouled. And we'll go to the line to shoot two. And like we said before, Jamal, they let a lot of stuff go. And now a few touch fouls and back-to-back -back plays. And this will send Jack Sixsmith to the line to shoot two. Yeah, the, the foul calls have definitely been inconsistent. But you definitely like what you see from both Sixsmith brothers. You know, I want to see if William Sixsmith, after making that, uh, that previous scoop layup just a minute ago, if he goes to the rim um, a couple more times, a couple more possessions. And Jack Sixsmith has been doing that all season where he's go ahead he drives to the rim. He's been making quality layups there. And right there, he was able to draw the foul, knock down two free throws, and the Brook Bearcat lead is now back to 11. And it also quieted down that Brooklyn faithful here in the Arc Arena. Coming in on six and a half to play. A ticket to the finals as Tessarero goes right to the rim. He finishes and one. Counted. And that was another touch foul. The foul there is going to be on number one, Jack Sixsmith, and an opportunity right away for Brooklyn to respond, and sloppy fouls there by the Bearcats to give them a free point. It's like the early in the game, we're going to let stuff go. As the time gets closer and closer to that zero-second mark, where there's no more time, we're going to see fouls more rampant. So I think the Bearcats should probably take advantage of that and go to the basket. And Tessarero knocks that one down. And Jamal, to your point, I don't like. I hate that as a, as a, a spectator. And even as just a sports fan, I don't care how you're going to call the game. You could call every touch foul. Right. But call throughout the game. Don't give me five minutes of touch fouls. Nice play there by Sixsmith. And able to finish with the right hand. A little hop step. And we haven't seen that too much from William Sixsmith. Three's not falling. Have to get inside. Able to finish with that right hand. We haven't seen much of it from him. Oh, Andre Harris comes away with the steal. But McLean picks his pocket. And it'll stay with Tessarero. But Jamal, to what we were saying before, it, it's just incredible. Like, there again, another touch foul. I don't care if you're calling the touch fouls, but a touch foul with five minutes remaining has to be a touch foul with two minutes gone in the first half. Yeah, I, I, I think as the time runs out of the game, the foul calls become more magnified and you focus on them more as you did in the, in the beginning of the first half. But, mo, but mo, most importantly, on that last play, I wonder if William Sixsmith is going to start to do that. 
because they're, they're expecting him to go ahead and catch that ball and shoot. If he might just catch them cheating a little bit, trying to get out there and just go straight to the rim because we see them on the hop step. He knows how to shoot the three, and uh, he knows how to work his way around the, um, the basket as well. And Shai knocks down the first of the one and one. Baruch's lead down to nine again, and it's been back and forth. Baruch have been up by 18. And they've also been only up by six, so it's been. Sorry, they've been up as much as 20. So it's been back and forth. Even Brooklyn had the lead in the early going, but they haven't had it back since their uh, first five minutes of the first half. It's 5.55 remaining. It's Zacchino on the ball. He gives it off to Jack Sixman, and the Bulldogs will relax on the pressure. Eight-point game. Yeah, especially at this point in the game, it's anybody's game, and it's just going to come down to who can, make them, who can make more plays on both the offensive and defensive end. Tyler Page now into the lane, working on right. Crossover, steps back, now gives it off to Jack Sixsmith. William in the corner. He's going to drive baseline, gives it off to Andre Harris. Right wing three. He knocks that one down. Andre Harris, a big three, and extends the lead back to 11. Tessarero will bring it into the front court for the Bulldogs as they look to answer. Andre Harris not having his best game, but that was a timely three that the Bearcats needed in that moment. Now McLean into the paint. Tries to throw it off William Sixsmith as he got trapped, and it'll be a steal there for the Bearcats. Nice heads-up play as William was alert to what he was trying to do, and it'll be Baruch's ball into the front court. Jack Sixsmith now, crossover move behind his back, looking for options, Aquino on the right wing. He gets it knocked away, and it's off Spencer last, and will stay with the Bearcats. And it's going to be a timeout. It's going to be a full timeout with 4.56 remaining. We're going to go to your last commercial break of the night. Baruch lead by 11. You're watching YouTube, uh, Baruch Basketball on YouTube channel, Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting. In New York City, there is a place for people that want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. Where if you work hard, the possibilities are endless. A place to learn, train, and play. In that order, the City University of New York Athletic Conference. This is where it all comes together. Find your people, be a part of a team, and don't just play the game change the game champions aren't born they're built the city university of new york be exceptional and welcome back to the arc arena i hope you're not just tuning in jamal because if you are you're missing a great game baruch up as much as 20 up only as much as six here in the second half well in the end of the first into the second half but what a play by Brooklyn College. Not only what a play, well, shout out to their fans because they have packed half the arena tonight and they have been probably the dominating noise here in the Arc Arena. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and understandably because at, this, at one point their team was down by 20. And, you know, once you see a team start cutting into that lead and the lead becomes 15, then it becomes 10. Ooh, nice play there by Page, able to finish with the right hand. Sorry to cut you off there, Jamal. No, it's all good, but you get more excited. So that anticipation, that rush is going to be louder than the Bearcats. But best believe, when Andre Harris made that three, we made our presence fail. Bearcat Nation, stand up. And it's McLean now up top. Now right, right wing three. Six Smith a little late to close out. It'll be Andre Harris on the rebound. And I got I to gotta give a hand to Coach Alisi. He has put this lineup in with Zucchino, Page, Six Smith, and Six Smith, and Harris, right? And with Harris at the five, they've been able to cut, stop the streak of Brooklyn and re take a, you know, extend the lead by seven since this lineup's come in. Credit to Coach Alisi after the lineup. Nice finish there by Jack Six Smith and extends the lead to 15. But credit to Coach Alisi for adapting a new philosophy here in the second half as, the, as we have seen less of Boateng and more of this smaller lineup. Bounce pass out of bounds as it was right trying to find the cutting Tessarero underneath and it'll go back to the Bearcats. A little under four minutes gone. Nothing done and dusted yet here at the Arc Arena, but Baruch having an opportunity to extend that lead once again. And more importantly, it feels like the Bearcats are getting back to what they do on offense, you know, and it all started with that three-pointer from Andre Harris, followed by a Bradley Page layup, 
Then Jack Sixman going straight to the lane, taking the contact and getting that layup. The Bearcats are playing Bearcats basketball, and that's why they're up by 15. And to, to that point, I mean, taking the contact, three minutes ago that was going to be a foul. So once again, inconsistent from the rest. Oh, Byler Page hits the deck hard, and he draws the foul. I thought that layup was going to drop, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. The foul is going to be on number five there. Jordan Wright, impressively his first. And I think that was the breather that Bradley Page needed because once he's been he's come back into the game, he's got that early, got that layup coming back into the game, and now he's stepping to the line for two, and he has 25 points with, with an opportunity to make it 27. But he's knocking on that 30-point game like he did the last time we were here in the Arc Arena. And it'll be Bryler Page at the line. It is the final three minutes of 32 seconds of the first semifinal for the CUNYAC Conference as Page knocks down the first. It's the number one seed, Baruch Bearcats, the number four seed, Brooklyn College Bulldogs. And then tomorrow night at College of Staten Island, it'll be Staten Island hosting John Jay. That game also at 7 p.m. And Baruch now extending that lead to 17. Three thirty remaining. Tesserero now into the paint. Hand off there. And it'll be Spencer to finish. He cuts it back to 15. Jade Spencer. Now Sixsmith into the front court to Harris. He's fouled there by Spencer. And that'll send him to the line to shoot a one and one. That's going to be Spencer's second. I think we're going to see a lot of that on the Brook Bearcats side. With the Bulldogs. They're going to get into the trap. If they get the buck, if they get that point, they're going to get into the trap. And then we're going to see opportunities where they can have an opportunity to steal the ball. But what we're seeing from the Bearcats is as soon as they catch that ball into the front court and try to make a move, the Bulldogs are more than likely going to foul them. And Andre Harris rattles home that first one to, knock, to get it back to 16. And you can hear some of those that noise really starting to drain out of that Brooklyn College uh, fan side as they become a little bit quieter. Respectable, though, on their showing here today. You know, the, the, that clock, the game ain't over till the clock goes to zero, but with the Bearcats extending their lead to 17 with a little bit over three minutes to go. Spencer gets a double tap, a triple tap, and he's able to finish. And smart play there by Harris. He didn't have position. You don't foul in a situation like this. Up by 15. Gets it into the front court as Page. Now to Sixsmith on the right wing. Inside to Harris. Bounce pass to Zacchino. Weak side. He's fouled. And we'll go to the line to shoot two. And a late whistle there. And I was shocked because out of all the fouls they may have called tonight, that right. was the most legitimate. Yeah, that one was definitely a foul. Bang, bang play right there. But great way by the Big Cats to keep their eyes open, not to get flustered, and go ahead and make the right pass. 2.50 remaining. Baruch lead by 15. And this is almost the point of the game where the clock is almost going too fast if you're a Bulldog. And it's going a little too slow right now if you're a Bearcat. Kind of want to see some of these, more of these seconds tick off, tick off the clock. You definitely want to be able to take off as much time as possible and avoid stopping the clock by going ahead and getting fouled. But... What a way to extend the lead. Zacchino knocks down one of two. Leads now 16 for the Bearcats. Tesserero into the front court. 2.45 remaining. Crossover on Harris. He thinks about trying to get it inside the Spencer. He's able to lob that pass inside. Zacchino able to steal it, but they're going to call a travel. Wow, what a call there. Very interesting. It looked like he just composed himself, but they're going to say he took too many steps, and it'll go back to the Bulldogs. It just seemed like he got a step, and he, just caught, he was just trying to gather himself and get the ball back. Jade Spencer now has it on the right corner. He's going to drive hard, a little too hard. Shot's no good. Rebounded there by Sixsmith, and it'll be Jack Sixsmith to walk things up for the Bearcats. And a little bit on the two and a half minutes to go in this game. I think if the Bearcats are successful on this offensive possession, it's starting to settle in for the, for the Bulldogs. Even though their fans are keeping up right now, it's starting to settle in that the, Bull, the Bearcats may walk out of here victorious. Ryder Page, sloppy shot there. That's not the shot Coach Elise was looking for. You can see him shake his head. That's now right quickly into the lane for the Bulldogs. A little awkward layup. No good. It'll be Harris. And he traveled. I don't even see that. He, it looks like he It looks like he, he just pivoted. I'm, I'm not even sure where the call was there. Interesting play. And back-to-back -back plays for the Bearcats. 
as they travel both times while corralling rebounds. Maybe he slid the pivot foot just a little bit. Maybe he saw something, but we couldn't see it. We don't get the luxury, unfortunately, of the instant replay. Now inside to Tessarero, trying to give it off to Spencer. Tessarero straight up, no good. Spencer on the rebound, and one for Jade Spencer. Nice play there by Spencer to stay with, and he'll go to the line. The six foot four junior from Brooklyn, New York. That right there, the Bearcats do not want to play like that, because even if he makes this free throw, They'll only be down by 13. And still, once that, cl that clock does not stay zero, there's still an opportunity for the Bulldogs. And they knock it down. Nice play there. And it'll be six Smith to inbound. Looking for options. He's going to call timeout. I'm getting the word. It will be a full timeout. And uh, smart play there. I think he might add Andre Harris, but don't test it there. Talk stuff over with a minute and 56 remaining. It is the CUNYAC semifinal between the Baruch College Bearcats and your, and excuse me, the Brooklyn College Bulldogs. And uh, Baruch up by 13. You're watching on YouTube channel Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting. And a uh, minute and 56 left, Jamal. Almost to the point where if you're Brooklyn College, you got to draw something up because you need points and you need them, you need them quickly. No, definitely you need them quickly if you're the Bulldogs. You know, with only a little bit under two minutes to go here, down 13, you definitely need to come down the court, find a couple plays, get some threes up. Even if you get a couple of twos going to the lane, you could get fouled, slow down the clock. That'll be the best recipe in order for them to come back into this game because it's basically a five-possession game at this point, and the Bearcats just need to take care of the ball and just run that clock get a good offensive possession because if they can get a bucket or two here down the stretch, they can seal this game and walk out of here with the opportunity this Friday to play in the CUNYAC championship game. And that'll be against either Staten Island or John Jays. They'll tip off tomorrow at 7 p.m. at the College of Staten Island. Dolphins versus Bloodhounds. But first, we got to finish up Bulldogs versus Bearcats here at the Arc Arena. It'll be Bryler Page to inbound. Looking for a little more offensive movement. It's Andre Harris in the front in the backcourt. Gives it off to Jack Sixsmith. He's going to go past uh, Noah Wright. Uh, excuse me. Pardon me. That just checked into the game actually was Nathan Joseph had. He goes past him. And now the foul there is going to be on number number 13. Oh, excuse me, number 30, Jade Spencer. My apologies. His fourth. And it'll send Briler Page to the line. Also, what worked about this smaller lineup that Coach Elise has been using, Jamal, quality free throw shooters in the game to try to close things out for the Bearcats. I mean, that's what you need to close out the game down the stretch, you know. You're going to get fouled. The other team is going to try to stop the clock, and you need your free throw shooters out there who are going to go ahead and knock down these shots that are important for the game. Joseph at and Shy to the bench. As Brother Page off on the second, rebounded here by Spencer. Now it'll give it off to... Jordan Wright, quickly into the lane. And he's fouled. And we were talking about it a minute ago. One way to slap the clock. You know, both teams are in the extra bonus. So every foul is two shots at the free throw line. So I think that's going to be Brooklyn College strategy at this point. We're going to go ahead and go to the basket, try to get some buckets, try to draw a foul, shoot, make our free throws, trap them. Number two, shot. Make our free throws and trap them and then try to go ahead and force a turnover. It's just going to be very important that they execute on the trap. I think the Bulldogs are going to have to hit some threes down the stretch here. So Andre Harris now over to Jack Sixsmith. Once again, the full court press here by the Bulldogs. Up to Harris. Harris, ooh, could have went right to the basket. Smart play there. Slows it down. Page over to Sixsmith. That's all you got to do right now is kill the clock. And the foul there is going to be on Spencer, and that should do it for him. So uh, Jade Spencer will call it an e afternoon. His final line today. Spencer had 17 points and 11 boards. A solid double-double, including two steals. Shy and Spencer come to the bench. Into the game is number 22, Nico Serrano. And number four, Anthony McLean. Spencer definitely kept him in the game as much as possible. But as the time starts to get to tick away and the Brew continue to increase their lead, this one is looking out of reach for the Bulldogs. 
So a capacity crowd here at the Arc Arena and a couple notable people here in the arena tonight. We talked in John and Musa last year's Brooklyn Nets first round pick is in the building. Also very impressive, Teresa Edwards, a five time Olympian and a four time US women's basketball gold medalist is also actually right behind us here on the right behind the Baruch bench. So a very impressive uh, star studded cast here at the uh, Arc Arena as the shot there by, uh, by Wright is no good. William Sixsmith on the rebound. Double team here comes from Serrano and Tessarero over to Jack Sixsmith. Gets it in the front court. Now over to Andre Double. Harris. Double. And th I mean, it's it's all but over here. As now it's given off to William Sixsmith. And unless they foul, Baruch are able to just run out this clock. A lot of time coming off. I don't know why you're not fouling underneath the Boateng. He finishes no with the right hand. Can't finish. Ball knocked around. Melman comes away with the rebound. It'll be McLean. Now McLean going straight to the basket, finishes with the right hand. They could have definitely used McLean early on when he was out in that first half, but it looks like his efforts that he's putting forth now aren't going to come to the benefit of the Bulldogs. Harris is fouled as his layup is no good, and with 37.3 left, Baruch could start feeling it, and the Brooklyn College crowd is a little bit quiet. We can actually see some people starting to leave the Arc Arena as it's all but done and dusted here on the campus of Baruch. And it'll be Harris to the line to shoot two as they are now in the double bonus. There's Aquino waiting to check into the game. 37.3, but a solid win here if you're the Bearcats and taking two or three from a tough Brooklyn College team this year. Mightily impressive as well. Yeah, it's mightily impressive, and you got to like the fight from the Bulldogs because they were definitely coming. They were definitely coming back in this game, and they were going to definitely put the pressure on the Bearcats, cutting the lead to at one point nine points. Six, I think they got it down to. Yeah, and it was very close, but the Bearcats. Going to walk out of here victorious. And more impo most importantly for the Bulldogs, a lot of the players who played in this game and played well for them will be back as their juniors this year and be back as seniors next year. So they'll definitely have a great roster to look forward to next year. And the only senior is uh, second team all-conference, Nathan Joseph at the six foot one senior from Brooklyn, New York. So this will be his last game. 37.3 remaining. It's the Cuniac semifinals between Baruch and Brooklyn. Baruch lead. 73 to 59, you're watching Baruch Basketball on YouTube channel, Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting and Jamal. Once again, Briler Page, we saw it last week against College of Staten Island tonight, 27 points, excuse me, 29 points, I believe. No, I got it right the first time, sorry. 27 <laughs> points for Page on nine of 19 shooting, so shooting 48% from the field, five of, four of nine from three, five made from the line. Three steals, though, but the 27 points contribute also with 19 for Andre Harris. We, we talked about it at halftime. You're going to get production like that, 48 between the two of them. Uh, excuse me, 46 between the two of them. They're going to be tough to stop. No, it's definitely going to be tough to stop as they're both three, I mean, two of the top three scorers for the Bearcats this season. But most importantly, when you come out and do it and come out and, and score the way Brawler Page was from the beginning of the game, and at various points for the game for the Bearcats, he definitely showed his leadership and put his team on his back. And now they're going to walk out of here as the time clock goes as the time goes down. They're going to walk out of here with an opportunity to face the winner of Staten Island versus John Jay in the Cuniac Championship this Friday. McLean all on Harris here, really. Just Baruch winding out the clock. And that will do it. It is the semifinal. Now finalist, Baruch Bearcats winning it tonight, 73 to 59. A great effort from Coach Alisi's team. A great comeback try by the Brooklyn College Bulldogs. But it will be the Bearcats to face off at Hunter College against either the College of Staten Island or John Jay. And that will be decided tomorrow night. But like we said, Jamal, it was really about, I mean, in the first half, it was really about Bryler Page. In the second half, we saw some other players like Andre Harris, Williams, Sixsmith, Benjamin Boateng really show up. 
But Brawler right from the opening jump and even ignited this team with five points here in the to start this second half. I mean, you're talking about an opening three, then the layup had five just right off the bat, kind of knocking Brooklyn back a little bit, and that will do it here. I mean, what a what a play by Brawler Page all around, but really scoring when Baruch needed it the most. Yeah, you know, the, the Brooklyn Bulldogs, great team, great season. You know, in the losing effort, they definitely gave the Brook Bearcats all that they can handle it at various points of the game, at one point even cutting the lead down to six. But it was Bryler Page, it was Andre Harris, Jack Sixsmith, William Sixsmith, their leaders in the game coming back and leading the charge, you know. At various points when they couldn't find scoring, you had William Sixsmith with two layups that was crucial for the Bearcat. Jack Sixsmith going to the line for that three-point play, you know. At various different points, different players for the Bearcats stepped up. And even from the bench, we have Benjamin Botang who came in and played very big minutes for the Bearcats, and as well as Alan Villar in the absence of George Smith Jr., who left early in the game. So it was a collective effort, and we're going to kind of see what's going to be, what can we expect this Friday when Coach Alisi goes back to the drawing board, see what worked this game, and put together a game plan for Friday. And I think we could all say we want to see Kyle to Staten Island against Baruch in the finals, just based yeah. off of some of the animosity that we saw last game. But Credit to Coach Alisi here. I mean, he has a great senior-laden team, and there's a lot of players that can score. Right. He he might have been the most valuable component of the game tonight. We talked about it a little bit. You, you, their, their most successful five, I thought, in the first half was the Six Smith brothers with Benjamin Boateng, Andre Harris, and Bryler Page. Change that around, you see Brooklyn College coming back into the game in the second half, and I thought that their most successful lineup in the second half was actually remove Boateng from that lineup, insert Joseph Zacchino, and you have that five with Zacchino, Page, the Six Smith brothers, and Andre Harris playing the five, really giving you more of a speed lineup and a little bit more dimension on the offensive end. And I wonder if that opened up the lane for them because Zacchino was one who could also step back out there and knock down the three. So with all five of these players out there on the court, you know, you are forced to come out wherever Zacchino is and play him. That brings the center out of position. And it opened up the lane for a Jack Sixsmith, also in a William Sixsmith to get to the rim. And a credit to William Sixsmith, realizing his shot is not falling, switching up the game, showing everybody he's just not a one-trick pony and just could hit threes. He could also go to the rim and get it busy. Yeah, so credit to him, credit to Coach Elise, and credit to these Baruch Bearcats for um, a nice win here at the Arc Arena, winning by 12, up by 20 at one point, got it, Bulldogs got it back to six. And now uh, Baruch really at, uh, finishing off strong, ending the game, winning 73-61. to 61. So, Jamal, that's going to do it for our basketball season. Um, a it, great year. Baruch going to another championship, our third, I think, in fourth year, four right. years of doing it. Unfortunately, we're not going to have the pleasure of calling that one as uh, we're not going to be able to head out to Hunter College and, and see that one live. But um, a solid effort, and uh, Coach Alicia has to be happy with this team. The senior group has been great with Bryler Page, the Sixsmith brothers, and Andre Harris, and they still have some more games to play. Regardless, I think win or lose, they're going to have a postseason tournament to go to. But if they can win and get to that D3 tournament, I think it'll be huge. No, it'll definitely be huge, and a credit to the Bearcats, the full roster, everybody coming in and putting in their time, their effort, and putting themselves in position to be play in the championship game. And most importantly, it's been great to be along the ride in the process. We've watched so many great games, so many great battles over our time here broadcasting for the Bearcats, and I'm so great to see them get into the championship game. We got, we got to broadcast the first, one of the championship games when they lost to Brooklyn College, but now to see them go back to the championship game, it'll be interesting to see how they fare and the cook out of their walk out of there victorious, but we'll see you on Friday. So another great rivalry matchup between the Bulldogs of Brooklyn College and your Baruch Bearcats. That'll about do it for us here at the Arc Arena. This broadcast has been in conjunction with the CUNY Athletic Conference and the the Baruch College Athletic Department. Once again, your final score: Baruch seventy-three. The Bulldogs of Brooklyn College sixty-one. You've been watching the CUNY Act semifinal. On YouTube channel, Baruch College, Baruch Bearcat Broadcasting. Have a great night, everybody. Good night.